Thoughts review. First impressions of the Go Fast update from yours truly. All of my experiences from this update have been on PC. Important to note, PC. I have been hearing better things from the console side with regards to some of my later points and, and thoughts. Let's start with the good. The most goodest thing out of the entire update is the Linear Fusion Rifle Weapon class and the buff that it received with shotguns being close behind. A 50% damage boost for Linear Fusions and a 35% boost for shotguns with shotguns also getting an inventory bonus. These buffs have solved what I call the Megalixir effect where you save powerful items forever because you're afraid to use them because they're rare. What if I need them for the final boss? I'm not gonna have them and I'm gonna really need them and they're so good, I need to have them. This effect was sort of in Destiny with certain power weapons where they were just so weak that if you wanted to use them, you needed to save all of your ammo for just one target. Or if you were smart, you just used a rocket. Another issue, was value with precision weapons. Missing a crit with a precision weapon just felt like a complete waste of damage because the value of a crit is obviously the damage. With linear fusions at least, even if I don't crit, I still get decent value out of the shot. Shotguns are now at least viable with their boost with their issue just being risk and value. Previously, you needed to risk dying to kill a high value target because your damage was just sad. Now, there's a big damage boost, you have increased reserves, it's a little more worth going for those burst damage kills on a target to get rid of it quickly, at least in most activities. With the inventory increase, you don't have to worry about blowing all of your ammo on a couple of dudes. However, I think rockets are still champion in most categories due to ease of use and the value that they bring, even with everything else getting buffed. Rockets are a low skill, high value weapon that brings burst damage on either one or multiple targets. You need to be accurate, but you don't need to be precise. Cluster bombs being the way that they are just exacerbates the issue on certain bosses. Other weapons are high skill, or they have counters, they can't just be used wherever they want, their in-air accuracy is purely random, and for boss damage, they just didn't end up being better than rockets. Snipers are also in this boat to a degree. Their damage was boosted, crit multipliers boosted. If they got boosted even the slightest bit more, I think we'd be in good shape. The gap of power between the power weapons is much smaller. And I'm excited to see how good other power weapons end up being, especially linear fusion rifles, because I think they have a chance to be really, really strong. The next good is the submachine gun. Previously, submachine guns just burn through ammo like crazy. Their damage was fine for the most part, but it wasn't really worth putting one on knowing their range limitation and their limited ammo. Difficult activities usually encourage safer play, so why am I gonna bother with an SMG? I have to get really close and that's very risky. Now, more ammo, more damage, it's a little more viable. I ran a Prestige Leviathan using Antiope D Inaugural Address, that's the raid pulse for everyone who just said, what the hell is that? And a linear fusion rifle the entire time with minimal issues. That's how viable things have become. So, to someone like me, I can appreciate not always having to use Better Devils, Hard Light, and a rocket launcher for literally everything. Not because I want to use those things, but because it was just so much more effective than everything else. Please give me tempered metal. Yes. Oh, tempered metal with kill clip. Hang on, hang on. Void. Void, 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 void. Ending void. Okay. Pulse rifles are the next goodest thing. Pretty much all pulse rifles got buffed across the board, and in PvP are nearly all viable regardless of the archetype. I have been enjoying Relentless, the Trials Pulse, Vigilance Wing, which can now two burst, Inaugural Address, which is insane with Kill Clip, Darkest Before and Nightshade, which were already not too bad, at least Darkest Before was, 
The pulse rifle world is your oyster. You can do whatever you want. Their PvE viability obviously has gone up, but a big part of pulses, again, is value and getting crits. Their body shot damage is almost pathetic. So if you can't crit effectively, then their value plummets. Prepare yourself for the age of Vigilance Wing because it is here, it is strong, it can two burst, and it's just really, really solid. The next goods are Arc Strider and Dawnblade. The animation times for Arc Strider are insanely noticeable and it makes the staff so much of a smoother and faster experience. This isn't a, well, I kind of see where they changed something, they did a little something here, change. No, this is a legit big buff, which is great. Raiden Strider Hunters should be very happy about this because you just got a really great PvE buff when you didn't need it at all. You were already one of the best PvE supers in the game with Raiden Flux. And now you get a great PvP buff as well. Striders are everywhere in PvP now to the point where it's annoying. Dawnblade's speed increase is substantial, to the point where you can go faster than a 160 speed Sparrow, to the point where you can kill yourself on a wall from going too fast. The thing that I really like about this is that unlike trying to do any form of Titan skating, which you can sort of do if you rebind some keys, you can start moving quickly instantly without any insane button combinations or anything like that. This makes it actually practical in its use. There's not a lot of practicality in going fast in a straight line for a long time. There is practicality in a big speed boost that happens quickly. I don't know if this is exactly what the subclass needed to bring up its viability, but it's definitely a fun change for sure. Dawnblade also got some other buffs too, namely the entire top subclass block, which has a really great neutral game, but a very fast super, and yet I find myself using the bottom tree solely for the super. I think that's because to get value out of the top tree, you really need to adopt a specific play style. And sometimes I don't want to jump through a bunch of hoops just to get the benefits of the top tree. Shoulder charge is unnerfed, and it's glorious, and I love it, hooray, good. So all those things were the super good, 100%, yes, no problems at all, things from the patch, at least from my point of view. There's plenty more that I covered in my previous thoughts video, stuff like melee supers getting speed boosts, etc, etc. Things that are net goods, but I didn't have much to say on them other than, yes, good, that, that's good, I like, I like thing. Then, there is the bad side of the patch, and we will start with... Rumble. Rumble, in its current form, at least on certain maps, is unbearable. Bungie has already made note of the spawns being kind of not, let's, let's, let's just say not good. But I loaded it up, and Rumble with eight people is just a cluster. I think with six people, it would be better. Maybe certain maps play better with eight. Endless Veil sure doesn't. I'll tell you that much. Maybe if they can fix the spawns, it'll be fine. But right now, you can spawn in and either be shooting at or be shot at within a second of your spawn. The power ammo changes also turn the average rumble into a game of who can get the most Legend of Acrius ammo. And good luck trying to fight back against Legend of Acrius. Again, I wouldn't mind seeing six players instead of eight and maybe reduced power ammo spawns if that's not already the case. However, I do realize that if you reduce power ammo spawns, that it makes it that much harder to fight back against Legend of Acrius, I mean, power weapons. Speaking of Legend of Acrius, if you thought it was rough to fight against it before, then I got some really bad news for you because it's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's still really good. And now you have the capability to get a lot more ammo for it and you can move faster. Yeah, get ready for that. The next not so good thing was a certain portion of the movement speed changes. Yes, Mobility 2 versus Mobility 10 is definitely noticeable for sure. While walking. 
Sprint speeds are still not affected by mobility. I feel like they should be. I feel like sprinting is what most people use to move around. No one really walks around to get around. I guess being able to move fast without sprinting means your weapon is always ready, which is good. But sprinting is just the method of travel. That's a question I definitely would like answered. Why isn't mobility affecting sprint speeds? Why is that decision being made? It does affect strafe speeds when you're in combat, which is helpful. So at least it's not a total loss. Finally, I am just sort of whelmed, probably underwhelmed at how different PvP feels. In that it doesn't feel like it changed in a drastic way or anything, or as much as I was anticipating that it would. Yes, I can move faster, which is great. And yes, several trash tier weapons are now viable, if not the better of the options available. I'm looking at you, nearly every pulse rifle in the game. But the pace didn't feel like it changed too much. Minus all the Legend of Acrius. I mean, power ammo everywhere. The power ammo change. Yeah. A lot, lot of Acrius. And just full auto shotties everywhere. Which I totally get why. It just feels like PvP is going to be a game within a game. The game of keep power ammo away from the enemy. Because otherwise they're going to have shotguns. Which, yeah, is maybe part of the strategy when playing a game like this you know, control the resources. But now, instead of moments where you needed to keep your eyes out for power spawns and all that, it's just all the time. It's just power ammo all the time. And you never know what you're gonna get. Now for me, primary versus primary time to kill times aren't the hugest deal in the world. I think they feel okay. <gasps> but when trying to retaliate against a smart player, or even a player with a Legend of Power weapon, it just feels impossible. And that's where people have an issue, self-included. It's easier to kill people in supers than people with power ammo. In terms of the meta in general, it still feels like everything from before the patch is just as good. Because it is. Nothing really got nerfed, so the best stuff is still pretty much the best stuff. I think that contributes to the feeling of being underwhelmed. I was still seeing the same weapons being used, very little variation in loadouts, minus Vigilance Wing. Or maybe it's my confirmation bias coming into play, where I was remembering more times where I was killed by pre-patch metal weapons more often because I was mad that people weren't trying new stuff as much as I wanted them to. The movement speed increases are nice, but depending on what kind of player you are, they are subtle, and some people might not even notice some of the more finer adjustments. Overall, I think this makes PvE more fun, and this patch doesn't change much for me with regards to PvP. PvE options feel much more liberating, more things are better, which means new strategies open up. Great. That's good. That's really good. PvP, to me, pretty much an average PvP player, didn't get the shakeup that encourages me to play it more. It'll still probably be something that I largely ignore. However, part of that is because of low PC population, and I don't really feel like getting steamrolled all the time. It's the main reason why I don't play Trials anymore, so I do need to give Console another shot to see how it is over there. Team shotting is still very much a thing after the first couple of days, and I think that's just the nature of 4v4. I really want to see how 6v6 Iron Banner plays out, if it's still team shot insanity or not. I honestly want to see just what 6v6 looks like on a Destiny 1 map with Destiny 2's weapons and balance. I think that's the ultimate test to see if team shotting can ever be removed. I don't think it'll ever completely be removed because team shotting is always going to be the best way to play in a team, but we're looking for the difference between Destiny 1 team shotting and Destiny 2 team shotting. Something this patch does not do is really address the loot problems of the game at all, minus Nightfall loot. But the reason I'm not going to talk about this is because the objective of the patch wasn't to address that specific problem. So I think it would be unfair to discuss it. It's like me asking why you didn't make a cheesecake when you clearly said you were going to make a chocolate cake. It just doesn't make sense, right? I would sound like a moron. Yes, it's a problem still, but it wasn't the goal of this patch. Nightfall loot. I've got none of it. <laughs> After six runs 
with scores in between 85 to 100,000, so I can't speak on it too much, but I have seen the weapon, and it doesn't look too much like a PvE all-star kind of weapon. It seems more like a PvP weapon. Uh, I need to get more of the Nightfall loot to really come to a conclusion on it, but it seemed like there were a couple of weapons, and then there were some cosmetic items in there, and it's all just one-off stuff that isn't really what we need right now with regards to loot. Uh, but we can talk about that another time. That's all I got. PvE, nice buffs. I really like it. PvP, people still seem kind of mad or indifferent. I'm kind of indifferent myself. It doesn't help that PvP is still as bare bones as it's ever been outside of ornaments in terms of features and rewards and whatnot. But again, that's another problem for another day. Please like video if you liked it. Thank you for watching.